of 101 famous poems. The House by the Side of the Road By Sam Walter Foss Spoken and with commentary By E. T. Hansen There are hermit souls that live withdrawn in the place of their self-content. There are souls like stars that dwell apart in a fellowless firmament. There are pioneer souls that blaze their paths where highways never ran. But let me live by the side of the road and be a friend to man. Let me live in a house by the side of the road where the race of men go by, the men who are good and the men who are bad, as good and as bad as I. I would not sit in the scorner's seat or hurl the cynic's ban. Let me live in a house by the side of the road and be a friend to man. I see from my house by the side of the road, by the side of the highway of life, the men who press with the ardor of hope, the men who are faint with the strife. But I turn not away from their smiles nor their tears, both parts of an infinite plan. Let me live in a house by the side of the road and be a friend to man." I know there are brook-gladdened meadows ahead and mountains of wearisome height, and the road passes on through the long afternoon and stretches away to the night. But still I rejoice when the travelers rejoice and weep with the strangers that moan. Nor live in my house by the side of the road like a man who dwells alone. Let me live in my house by the side of the road. It's here the race of men go by. They are good, they are bad, they are weak, they are strong. Wise, foolish, so am I. Then why should I sit in the scorner's seat or hurl the cynic's ban? Let me live in my house by the side of the road and be a friend to man. How not to be a Puritan? I was raised a Mormon, which is an intensely Protestant religion, and like any other intensely Protestant religion, much of our self-esteem was gleaned from our conviction that only we in this world of sin, confusion, and darkness live lives pleasing to God. Next to reading, writing, and arithmetic, one of the skills I acquired when I was young was to ferret out everything anyone was doing wrong all around me. And I got really good at it. Judging others is one of life's great pleasures. That electrifying moment when you recognize you are morally superior to someone else. The delicious empowerment of knowing your own behavior is almost godlike by comparison. That blissful state in which you forget your discontents and all is right with the world. When I left the church, I thought I was leaving all that behind, but the opposite was true. 
The love of judging the sins of others was even more prevalent in the non-religious world. It just had different sins. Now it was all about having the wrong political opinion, or saying the wrong words, or telling the wrong joke, or not being quite as socially skillful as you ought to be. Society today is caught up in an all-out war of judging everyone else. I remember the first time I encountered the phenomenon of vegan punks. The original punk movement was all about rejecting society with its hypocrisies and superficial obsessions. It was about giving the middle finger to the entire world and not accepting its oppressive norms and rules. One day, in a time when punk was dead in most of the world, I encountered a modern-day punk in Germany and asked him what being punk meant to him. That set him off on a rant about post-colonial oppression, the evils of capitalism, the hypocrisies of America, animal rights, and his fervent belief that only veganism can save the world. When I had finally escaped his grasp, it all came back to me, my entire childhood. All those Sundays in church, listening to a litany of sins the world was guilty of, and all the rules we had to obey to get to heaven. And I realized, this punk would have made a great Mormon. It feels like we've come full circle. Like today, we are the reincarnation of the very first culture we brought to the North American continent, the Puritans, who built a strong religious community based on judging each other, but a community that was doomed to destroy itself. I was far into adulthood before I realized that this habit was crippling me. I could no longer see men and women for who they were. I could not talk to them naturally. There was a wall of condescension, distrust, and fear between us. Judging is a hard habit to kick, but I do my best now and on those days when I more or less manage to see the world around me without judging, it immediately becomes a far more interesting and colorful place. Where others see racists and sexists and reactionaries and the uninformed and ignorant, now I see honest, intelligent people with fascinating life experiences and philosophies. Human beings with a deep well of humanity and a unique sense of individuality that I otherwise would have missed. I look at the people vilified as old-fashioned and out of touch, and I see a wealth of experience, love, and wisdom. I look at the young people with their strong convictions, and I see an exhilarating enthusiasm for creating a better world. In the criminal, the outcast, the enemy, I see the unique, the wonderful, and the tragic. Even when I look back at the religious world I left behind, I see my former compatriots differently from the years immediately following my departure, as good people sincerely struggling to make their lives and the world a better place. It took me a lifetime to see how poor a life is that is built upon judging, and how rich, joyous, and fulfilling life can be when you try to look at other human beings as, well, as human beings. On those days when I manage not to judge others, I find it easier not to judge myself. About Sam Walter Foss Sam Walter Foss, 1858-1911, was an American librarian and poet born in rural Candia, New Hampshire. He graduated from Brown University and served as librarian at the Somerville Public Library in Massachusetts. For a time, he wrote a poem a day for newspapers and was popular as the poet of the common man. Lines from his famous poems, The House by the Side of the Road and The Coming American, 
are still quoted today and are engraved on various public buildings. Thank you.